Jesus didn't say that we would, that offense would come. All right. He didn't say that. And he's saying here in meekness, and meekness is strength in meekness. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord did say that um, when we are weak, that's when we are strong. Right. So we are to, uh, as God's servant, we are to instruct. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He called it a little more subtle. Hallelujah. We're supposed to operate in meekness. Mm -hmm. That we that we not be a, an offense to people, nor right. will we receive offense, because um, like Pastor was saying, that sometimes it's something you know, most time it's something that rises up in us. But what is it that they're spewing out to that's connecting mm -hmm. with that? That's in us. That's in us. Mm -hmm. Yes, because the spirit's going to connect with one another in a sense. Right. What is it? You know, you look at bullies. Bullies run in pack. You know, demons run in pack. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes you don't have to do anything before offense will come. Jesus didn't do anything, but he, but offense came upon him. Right. You know, so we just have to be careful of that that we take it in consideration what the Lord is saying here, that we are to be meek and we deal with offense. Okay. Aisha. Oh, okay. Um, <coughs> well, I had looked up strive. Strive. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one of the definitions was, well, the first one was make great efforts to achieve or obtain something. And the second definition was that we would um, struggle or fight vigorously. And his um, um, verse number 24 says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men to have to teach patience. Hey, like, we shouldn't, as servants of the Lord, yeah, we... we we have the knowledge and the wisdom, but it's people out there that don't know, and we shouldn't like try to get them mm -hmm. to to uh, like beat it into them to try to get it. Mm -hmm. But instead, we should just be gentle and um, basically understanding mm -hmm. and compassionate mm -hmm. towards them and uh, teach them. But we have to be like we gotta be we gotta exercise patience. You know, and God, God's work, God work. Our, our job is to sow into the people. It ain't to beat it into them. Uh, God would do the rest mm -hmm. if we just um, stay, stay, stay humble and be patient. God would do the rest. Our job is just to sow the teachings and the word into them, and okay. God will go and do the rest. Okay, so that scripture did bring out a lot of how believers in Christ should be towards an offense. Okay, we looked at, we also looked at about a couple of weeks ago, offended people are in two type of categories. There are those that have been, those that have been treated unjustly and those who think they have been treated unjustly. Those who think they have been treated unjustly. And that, and one way that the enemy holds us, holds an offense in us is that we hide the offense. Mm -hmm. Instead of bringing it out, we hide the offense. And that would be pride. Instead of going to the person and acknowledging what has happened, we hide it. So what do you think about that, Ms. Jack? Mm -hmm. That is true. You know, with that, uh, you say one is treating, being treated, in, treated injustly, like Jesus was treated unjustly, and the offense came upon him, and then those who think that they are unjustly not treated. And we hide it because it is pride. And pride, if we look beneath everything, pride is the number one hindrance. Mm -hmm. or the, the main ammunition that the enemy uses against God's people is pride. And that's what we got to pick out. So pride is a, a very instrumental tool of the enemy to combat God's people. Mm -hmm. And we have to realize that uh, as God's people, we, we, we realize that we're still human, mm -hmm. and there are some faults still in us. So once that pride rises up, we say, okay, Lord, we go to the altar, mm -hmm. okay, and ask the Lord to deliver us from that. There was a message um, that I was watching a, a, a Apostle Daniels on uh, Periscope, and she was talking about oppression and, uh -huh. and depression. Well, actually, she's talking about depression. And I proposed the question, what is the difference between oppression and depression? Mm -hmm. But she didn't come back with the answer, you know. She stated that we're going to have to go over that another time mm -hmm. because her session was about to close. Uh, and the, the thing, uh, uh, what, what I was leading to was depression comes to the flesh. You know, Winter Roman was waiting one. 
therefore there is now no condemnation to them who are um, who walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. So depression comes when there is uh, when God is trying to get that stuff out of our flesh. Mm -hmm. Oppression comes against the spirit to try to hinder us in the spirit realm. So when pride comes, it's a form of offense that's going to depress us if we linger in that mm -hmm. instead of going to the altar and get right. delivered from this flesh. Uh -huh. So we can be delivered from um, the pride that offends us. Okay. Okay. Elder Prevost, you got anything to say about that? Pride. Uh, ladies, we came in, we were talking about the two type of offenses that we've been talking about for the last two Sundays. Mm -hmm. About the person Six who's been done <laughs> unjustly and the one that thinks they've been done unjustly. And I was uh, elaborating that <clears throat> pride is a cause for people to hide the offense. They hide the offense because of pride. And that makes the offense worse. Who hides the offense? The person. The person that's offended. Okay. Well, the, the, they will hide the spirit. Pride keeps us from dealing with the offense, put it that way. Okay. So I was asking uh, Elder Prevost what he thought about pride. Oh. She just elaborated on it. Um. <clears throat> It, hiding through the offense. Yeah, you hide the offense because I don't want, I don't want to give you the satisfaction of knowing that you offended me. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want you to know that you could get to me like that. So I hide, I hide the offense, and by hiding it, that it, it makes it worse. Cause so are you it's still operating pop. in the same friendly manner with me? Because now you're hiding the offense. So when you see me coming, are you still you, or do you go that way? See what I'm saying? It's, and it depends. Mm -hmm. It depends because I I would um like when I was uh in in Houston when I was working at Minute there were a lot of people at the job that offended me but they didn't they didn't know they offended me. Mm -hmm. I treated them the same. I didn't even my wife was saying how how can you still talk to them and you don't even like them? Mm -hmm. You don't even like them but you still talk to them. And it was like uh, I I just hid the offense until. The offense piled. The offenses piled up so much that so I blew up at them. Oh. So that that's what okay. usually how that would happen. Yeah. So that's kind of like Pastor Perry. So we were talking about with Timothy about the meekness and how we're supposed to handle those that offend us. But you hid the pride inside, so you blew up. Oh. So I guess that wasn't a good form of pride. <laughs> and I don't know what you think, Pastor Perry. Uh, normally, I think we all should always let it out. Mm -hmm. I always say anything, time something builds up, if you don't let it out, it's going to explode. Right. And it's going to turn into something else. Mm -hmm. You know, like we said, it, it will turn into anger and, right. and malice. Uh, it, it's turned into division because mm -hmm. of it. And I think you should always uh, uh, confess it to let it out. Let it out. So that we can either work it out mm -hmm. or or do something so that we can come together. Mm -hmm. And not to be argumentative, but that's one of the main things, you yeah. know. If we yeah. can talk about it without arguing, mm -hmm. quarrelsome, that's what that, I don't think the word she was right. looking mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be quarrelsome over it. We want to be able to discuss it and get it out mm -hmm. because it might not even be what we thought it was. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. You know, so pride keeps us from dealing the with the offense. The offense might not be, you know. Right, so that's what we're talking about. Or I might not feel the way you think I feel <clears throat> about you. So that's going to be a confrontation. Mm -hmm. We have to confront that person. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't like to do confrontation. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Miss Yvette? Right. <laughs> um, I think I'm going through that now. Through what, Miss Yvette? The quarrelsome confrontation. Oh, okay. The, <clears throat> I, I was trying to think of a word somebody called me yesterday. Hmm. But it's like, um, I do, I'm holding it in. And I'm not. And how is that helping though? Not, 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 not what I'm doing now. What I'm saying is what we were talking, what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Holding in, holding back. That's not addressing the, right, right. the issue. The offense. Uh -huh. To keep mm -hmm. from being quarrelsome or to keep from having the argument because it's not going to stop. Right. If we still hold it in right. that, I don't know if it's pride though. To, I don't feel like it's 
I'm that proud. So why wouldn't you come? I don't, and come but I'm just saying, I don't think it's pride. I, it's mm -hmm. something else. I can't, I can't really think of the word mm -hmm. when they say it, but um, I don't want to be quarrelsome or argumentative. And if I see something wrong, I've been micromanaging. Okay, okay. To keep from addressing mm -hmm. the main issue. Oh, the main, okay. The main thing. And then you start, you move on to something else that you're thinking, you, the lesser evil you handle evil. Okay. before mm -hmm. you go to the major thing. Mm -hmm. You keep holding on to the major problem. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, the floor is dirty over there. And you know what happened over there. So let's go over here and pick up over here. And not going back to cleaning up what is really bothering you. Uh -huh. So I don't I don't think it's a pride thing mm -hmm. with me. I don't I don't know. Other things I would say is pride or fear or not holding on and not letting go. Uh -huh. So I, I don't see where the pride come in at. Okay. Well, he, well, he was saying that pride will keep you from admitting your true condition, that you are offended. Mm -hmm. So you just keep it in, like Elder Prevo said. You just keep it in and keep it in and keep it in until finally he busted out. He exploded. What do you think, Sister Beck? Well, I guess I agree with everyone, and she should talk it out. It's a matter of thing you. Okay, the Bible says it's the more thing you that you can do also and come back to the person that offend you. Right. But sometimes, as you say, it's hard to tell people when they offend you. I'm kind of like, I don't know. I, I'm i kind of person that I don't like people that know that they um, offended you hurt me or feed me or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I just go look in the mirror, talk to himself, and talk to God. <laughs> oh, Lord. So you just keep it in until Well when? well if I cry to okay, I'm the kind of person when I talk, I always kinda of get kind of my voice raises up. And that's what he was saying about not being argumentative. Right, so so, so, the so they, yeah, so they, so they, they think that I'm fussing, <laughs> I'm arguing, but that, that's, that's not what I'm doing. My voice, <clears throat> when I get upset, my voice go up, mm -hmm. you know, so then they say, well, you're fussing, you're arguing, but no, I'm not. I'm just, I get emotional, so I tell you, no, I be, my voice go up. Mm -hmm. So I don't, to me, I don't be fussing or crossing. It's just that when my voice goes up when I get, when I'm talking, my voice goes up. Mm -hmm. So I just don't say anything, because then it's like, you're fussing and you're arguing. So I just don't. So how does that help of the offense? That would keep it in. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's in. not happening, but, but then to keep from people saying you're you arguing or fussing, you just don't say anything, because like, you arguing you're fussing. So it, cause everybody express themselves different. Right, true. I can't express myself like you express yourself. Right. So, don't tell me, well, because you don't do something, it means that I got to do the same way you do, because I'm with two different people, so I can't, if I talk to you, then you don't talk to me the same way I talk to you. Right. Well, then we can go, go back and forth. But, uh -huh. <laughs> no, we're good. Okay, okay. All right, so what's your thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, what offense? But um, I've been offended. I've been offended a lot. But um, so I don't. I don't normally go back to the person. You don't. You know, I I have like some people, but I don't go back to everybody. But I do talk to my husband a lot, mm -hmm. like about stuff. And some and most of the time, it ain't what I think it was. It ain't mm -hmm. what I thought what it was. Okay. You know, when I do talk about it, he was like, well, maybe they ain't even talking to you. I was like, well. Mm -hmm. I, uh, maybe not. <laughs> so uh, sometimes it helps just to get it out. You don't necessarily have to go to that person. Maybe mm -hmm. you can just talk to somebody and they can help you get to the root of why you re really offended or why you feel like that person was talking to you. Or, you know, you can get it out that way. You know, yeah. I mean, there's been times that I held it in. You know, 
you know, all the patient with this person mm -hmm. and, you know, all of this. And I'm like, okay, I was understanding it. And it got to a point, I'm like, hold up now. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. So I, let, I, I kind of blew up at that person real quick. And then in the midst, I got offended again because that person was like, calm down, you need to fix that. I'm like, <laughs> oh, you've been blowing up at me, <laughs> coming at me all this time. I've been patient. I've been long suffering, stuff. Yeah. And so I got offended on top of that. So uh, holding it in ain't the best <laughs> thing to do. You might want to, you know, uh, attack it when it first happened to mm -hmm. diffuse any argumentative or confrontation or all that. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Project that question. Answer. Did you say sister? I did. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. I I, the word that heard your lips. You know, it bothers me if I can't think of without the mm. words. Uh -huh. yeah. Condescending. Oh, okay. Does it matter how you condescending? So they called you condescending. Condescending, and I micromanage. I try to micromanage because I think I know more than everybody else. I know you the know it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't let it out. Mm -hmm. I hold it in. Mm -hmm. And I was writing the word and, and Sister Jackie said condescending is a form of pride. Oh, okay. Okay. But okay. that's the word. And it hurt. It was like a a punch in the stomach mm -hmm. when he told me that mm -hmm. because you don't I had to go look it up. I don't see myself as being that. What is condescending? How did they see, what you did know? you look it up? What did you see it as? Ooh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's got a bunch of def, de, definitions. Well, just give me an example of um, what you saw. One is that I, it says that you see everyone else as an idiot. Oh. So okay. to me, that's <laughs> saying that if you're telling me that, then you think I am a know-it-all. Mm -hmm. But you're telling me I'm not saying it in a bad way. Mm -hmm. But don't put a but in it if you're not saying that I'm condescending mm -hmm. in a bad way but then yeah you still see it as me doing something in a bad way so I guess it is a form of pride mm -hmm. um, but to hold in these things and not bring it out that could be wrong with your stomach you're not hurting that person <laughs> you're hurting yourself you're by hurting not talking yourself. it out and bringing it out Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. What you're yes, ma'am. Because, you know, there are times that. We can, I can, can you speak up a little bit? There were times that even when um, I was in the military, a lot of times people would say, I was condescending. Uh -huh. But like Sister Yvette said, you know it. Because, uh -huh. see, I knew the regulations. I could tell you what page to go on to, mm -hmm. what, what, what paragraph to look into. Mm -hmm and uh, give you a meaning of it. And a lot of times things were like quick, you had to do them quickly. And so uh, I realized that they didn't study the regulations where I did. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you, we could be falsely accused of being condescending or away when you're not trying to because of the attitude right. that is not, you know, people can use that. I think condescending has a, a it needs the power of a negative attitude behind it, mm -hmm. uh, rather than trying to be helpful and teach someone. Because it could be just that person's insecurity okay. and lack mm -hmm. of wanting to get out Yeah, but I understand that. And in the same sense, mm -hmm. like you were saying about um, not wanting to do to be argumentative or mm -hmm. to, to be confrontational. Mm -hmm. Well, we got and that to hold back. scripture out of Second Timothy. Yeah, out of Second Timothy, Timothy but two, not two, wanting to, mm -hmm. to be that way. If you're condescending, you're not holding on mm -hmm. to, 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 to that. Or the, you're reading in my face that I'm being mean or I'm being ugly. It's an mm -hmm. And it's an attitude. The attitude is the thing, but that person that I have the attitude with mm -hmm. is taking them so long to realize okay. why I still have this attitude. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, even though you talked about it, mm -hmm. you didn't understand what I was saying. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna hold it in. I mm -hmm. understand. And then I'll get the attitude because you really don't get it. Okay. Uh, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Aisha, can you read again? Oh. Go oh, sometimes I read it think they get it. Uh -huh. 
They just don't care. Mm -hmm. That too. <laughs> they get what how you feel. You can tell them over, over, over again how you feel. Oh, again, don't do something that you don't like. But they still do it over, over, over again. So I didn't say, well, they just don't care. There's two words. They don't I care. don't care. Well, two phrases. I don't care and but. I wish I could erase it. Um, <laughs> um, I know that can, you can use those phrases and those words in sentences and terms to get your point across. But to just blatantly and blurt it out, but or I don't care. Yeah, I'm gonna get condescending on that one. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm gonna hold it in. Okay. I, <laughs> read Timothy again. <laughs> and the servant of the Lord must not strive, strive. but be gentle, gentle unto all men. Okay, stop. Mm -hmm. But a servant of the Lord must not strive, but be what? Gentle. Gentle, gentle. to all men. men. Keep going. Apt to teach. Patient and in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preventure will give them re repentance to the knowledge of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. And see, that's what we was looking at, the believers, mm -hmm. how we are supposed to handle that offense that comes towards us. Mm -hmm. I don't handle like that all the time either. You know, but anyway, we was talking about last week Joseph mm -hmm. and how he handled things. He handled things. Do you think, uh, Sister Beck, that Joseph handled things properly? All the things that he went through, mm -hmm. the brothers, the uh, being sold into slavery. Yeah, because when, when they came back, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't do he didn't do anything to him. He could have had them thrown into the prison, but. He didn't. You know what I mean? He kind of played on, played with him a little bit, mm -hmm. though. Right, because he didn't let them know who he was. Yeah, they he had grown up. They didn't know who he was, yeah, even though he had changed everything, you know. Yeah. He got played with him a little bit, but he didn't really do no harm to him. But he could really he do harm to him if he wanted to, but he didn't. So he had a good spirit. Mm -hmm. Do y'all agree with that? Uh, Pastor Pat, you don't agree with that? Yeah, because uh, he, he really had been offended by his brother. Right. He been present and, and, and all the things he went through by his brother, but yet when he came back, he still had a spirit of meekness. Yes, yes. That, that he could still deal with his brother, mm -hmm. even though his brother had offended him. Right. But but he didn't go arguing with him about it. Mm -hmm. he, he 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 played his role so low that they didn't even know that it was his brother because anyone else would have been blowing up. You put me in jail. Accusing. Right, right. And, and, and But he didn't do that. So I think he played his role very well, more than a lot of people would have played just for the small thing. Mm -hmm. but, but I think when we really get offended, to me, most times when you get really, we talk about the pride part, mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is just a lot of something built up in us that we don't mm -hmm. want to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't want to and use it when we are offended. It's, is because it's something in us that you are, uh, I need a word, that, that, that you're touching, you know, you, oh, you found okay. something in me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you're touching. I believe that's why, I believe that's why those things come, mm -hmm. to really, to see what's really in you. I believe that's why the Lord allowed them to come, must come. Uh-huh. Oh, this offense to, must come. Must come. Must to, come. To find those things that are within you. Mm -hmm. And, and let some come to rub up against you because you would never get rid of it. Right. And so, you, so, so to me, you have to learn how to be meek mm -hmm. and humble yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and once you don't have pride, then things people say really won't offend you that much. Okay. Okay. Well, Rose, you ain't said nothing about it. Before we leave and go to the next person, we gonna uh, talk about Joseph, how they did him, and he he really handled everything. On the coup, <laughs> he was point. He was point up. He didn't. He didn't do anything. So, what do you think about it? Um, Cause I everybody think... used Joseph, and Joseph did. Joseph that. Joseph didn't do it. Well, it's um. What was in Joseph? What integrity was in Joseph that he didn't retaliate? I think. Uh, when God have a role for you to play mm -hmm. in something, 
that he give you the Nodal to Hannah, wherever you put your strength. Well, well, the know yeah, the, but, but, mm -hmm. no, no, it will give you the ability. the ability, the strength, well, to Hannah, wherever he mm -hmm. put you to come, like your husband mm -hmm. say, like to him, he put no more than he can bear, you know. Right. So with with him, what he going through right now. Mm -hmm. But so with Joseph, Joseph had a part to play. Right. And because one for him, they will starve. Right. So God put him in that position so he can be there. In the time of famine, that they was there, he was there, so his brothers and his family had something to eat. Even even the uh, even the Egyptian, they had no something, cause he was there for a certain time. It this, he really put uh, for them there for that. So that's why he was had the spirit that he had because mm -hmm. God, he had wrote to play, mm -hmm. and he played his. He did his part. He did his part. So he got his dream to come to pass. Okay, baby, yeah, I'm sorry mm -hmm. I cut you off. I'm not, um, it's, um, he's, uh, he's, uh, Joseph was, he was just an humble person. Mm -hmm. And like the, like, like she was saying, the, the Bible says he'll never, we say he'll never put more on you than you can bear. But he says, um, uh, I will not allow you to be tempted above your measure. Okay. So he, he already knew, God already had chosen, like she was saying, God had already chosen Joseph. Mm -hmm. So he already knew Joseph would be able to be humble enough to bear what he was going to go through. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he wouldn't have chosen because mm -hmm. he knew he would have known he wouldn't he wouldn't been able to go through that and everything. No.